Welcome back to the Hunter's Guide, everyone. The ultimate Hunter's Guide, I should say. Let's, you know, call it its proper name, where we are going to be... Why am I not at full HP? Weird. We are going to be continuing on um, in the Undead Parish, where I think we're going to take the, dra the Dragon route. Cool. Get to look at our little character here. Anyways, oh shit, okay, well this is something I forgot. Um, I don't expect too many issues in today's episode. Thank you guys for leaving me sh suggestions and all that for weapons in the comments of the previous episode. I actually, okay, where do we stand? Like somewhere right here. Uh, I actually got quite a few good ones that I like. The number one choice here today Oh shit! Damn, that deals that much damage. I got my ass fried. Well, that's something I didn't know actually. I know the flame attack where he flies up does more damage. I I didn't know that, but damn. Well, you know, no point in turning back into human form. And just after I said I don't expect too many issues in this episode. Jesus. Uh, really? I mean. <clears throat> There's no big reason to get this bonfire or go this way. It's perfectly okay to take the standard route, which is through the bridge below. There's no issue with that either, but you do get some extra things here. Okay. Let's have better reactions this time around. See? Much better. I guess sometimes this is all down to luck, isn't it? So he's gonna fuck off. And we will be on our way. There was something I was gonna say. Oh yeah, the weapon suggestions, thank you. So there seems to be one clear front runner, uh, which is... What the hell? What the... What the shit was that? Did I just... Did I just almost get invaded? I cannot finish my fucking sentence. But I'm not online, am I? Because we'd be seeing the messages. <sighs> what the hell, game? Uh, where was I? <clears throat> well, we're definitely not gonna take out the Black Knight. The weapons. Cad, let me finish the thought game. The clear front runner right now in terms of suggestions is Quelax Fury Sword. Which I actually really like as a suggestion. <clears throat> Obviously I don't tend to use the boss weapons. Uh, just because they tend to be inferior to standard weapons. But for this playthrough where we're going to be rocking the bow anyways. I think a nice Quelag's Fury Sword would be actually very good. I mean, that's a fun weapon. All of you guys know that's a fun weapon. Uh, it was pretty much the number one weapon choice early on in the game. Okay, this is... Oh, look at that headshot. This is quite a ranged battle. God damn. Physics in this game are quite awesome. Hell yeah, bitch. Of course, what you probably don't know is that these guys cheat like hell. Uh, because... You see that? NPCs have aimbot on in this game. It's not even aimbot. It's, they all have Spoonbander from Isaac uh, equipped, giving them homing shots. It's a little bit crazy. Oh, I should have taken the skip, shouldn't I? Shit. Well, actually, we might still have time. I we do have time because I killed the guy. Okay, that's very good. Come on through. I didn't know he could come through. I did not know that. 
I mean, it kind of makes sense that he can come through, but shit. This is a very chaotic episode. Uh, God damn it. Okay, give me a second to breathe, guys. I have fucking like an army on me. See, this is when you have to abandon your plan to only use a bow and arrow. Uh, sometimes the game forces your hand. And we can't like advance too far back because there are like ranged enemies there. Cool. Well, we got through that, but what the hell, man? What the actual hell? I mean, at least it makes for interesting gameplay. Did I even finish my thought? Yeah, so bow-wise, we are going to be... I'm going to shoot your feet. Unbelievable. It's not how physics works. Uh, I'm probably going to go for the black bow of Ferris. But it, the combat bow is actually the strongest one, I think, in terms of like usability. It's very fast and... Um, it has pretty good... Like scaling. But Black Bow of Ferris is the true like bow to go for if you're playing a dedicated hunter, I think. That was a wonderful parry. The parry of the century. Oh yeah. Wanna go for that? Just gotta be careful not to fucking like roll off right here. Do you see that headshot? All about them headshots today. Hey, I don't even have much to cut out from this episode. Because the game has decided to keep it interesting. We can cut out the boring run to the bonfire. That makes it much more bearable. In terms of weapons for until I get Quelax Fury Sword, uh, well, the main thing to go for would be either a scimitar or a falchion because those are the two weapons that can be made into Quelax Fury Sword, and it seems fitting. I could go for this weapon as well, the short sword, which is very good, but honestly, it's kind of OP. People were also suggesting the winged spear, which I like, but <clears throat> which I like, but you know, me and the w fucking winged spear have been like basically married twice at this point. That's how much I use that weapon. So yeah, for demonstration purposes, uh, since we have it here, I should also show the other bolts uh, as well. You remember I showed off the crossbow. I think it's time to take a look at the wood bow and wood bolt and the heavy bolt as well. And I think we have the perfect target for our target practice. That does 14. That does 18. Unimpressive, I'd say. How much does our bow deal? This is a standard arrow. 20. Yeah, that's because of the scaling. Uh, the thing with the crossbow is that it doesn't scale off anything. But actually, considering that, the heavy bolt is kind of not worth it. Maybe it's better with the heavy crossbow. I'd imagine so. Let's use the scimitar uh, for Quillax Fury Sword. Let me tell you why. People tend to use the falchion. Obviously, the falchion is the superior weapon, but you know what? Let's see what the scimitar has to offer. Uh, yeah, I think that should be an interesting weapon. Again, until Quelag's Fury Sword. So I'm going to go back to the Undead Merchant after unlocking this shortcut here. Back to Fireling, because he's he, he's the one that actually sells the scimitar. You can get the falchion too from, like... Uh, this is not gonna work. You can get the falchion from... Oh, that actually does quite a bit of damage. 
from I think Blight Town. But this should be a little bit better, and we'll have our sort of temporary main weapon. He's got to be careful when he does two hits. Oh, that doesn't happen too often. And believe me, he can do two hits. But he can also do this. How the hell this works, don't ask me. Like giant 200 kilo mace swung by an armored asshole versus slap obviously the slap wins you know how it is that's a chad slap if we've ever seen one the ultimate pimp slap cool this unlocks firelink shrine by the way if you didn't know i think you should know by now you've been watching for a long time I haven't even talked to anyone here, like literally no one, but I'm still gonna steal all of Petrus's shit, just fitting, you know. Cool. And then once we hit the bonfire up, I think I'm still not gonna talk to anyone, but... We will go back to the Undead Merchant, which is a bit of a track, but we're big boys here. Uh, we can take that. Actually, it probably would have been smarter not to rest here. Ah, because I'm not under threat. I could have made it, and then I could have just Homeward Bone. Ah, whatever. You know, it's the Dark Souls 2, 3 and Sekiro habit of being able to warp any time. You just get used to it. Of course I got killed going to the Undead Merchant. What else would happen, right? Don't even try healing. So, after a minor setback, we've made it back. God, that's annoying. And let's see, this shouldn't be too expensive. Uh, scimitar. Let's do it, 600 souls. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, the wonderful scimitar, you've seen this weapon before. Uh, part of the Wanderer class, starting weapon. Only thing that's shitty about it is that it has a stupid flip instead of the much, much more useful kick. Oh well, what can you do? And before we go any further, uh, we also need to use the Firekeeper Soul. Yeah, it seems to do a bit less damage than the... Uh, the Short Sword, but it's way quicker. I mean, I don't think this is particularly a bad weapon. It's just the Falchion is way superior, so this one kind of gets left in the dirt. Uh, it, it is cool looking, I think, though, except for the floating hilt. But that's always been a thing. Floating hills and souls games go hand in hand. It's been like that for a while. Okay, cool. Before going any further, let's go ahead and reinforce this thing. Let's see. See, I have a single Titanite shard. And I also have my thing to consider. My bow. Obviously, it's a bit of a balancing act early on here. Later on, it's not going to be any trouble. Oh, but shit. I was just thinking. The longbow is here as well. Which we need to get. I'll get to you later, buddy. Don't worry about that. Obviously, this whole thing with upgrading is going to become much less of a problem later on. But early on, you kind of want to keep a balance. 
So yeah, while we're here... Oh fuck. You don't want to get hit by both attacks there. It does quite a bit of damage. But yeah, we might as well pop, pop into Darkroot Garden because we have a free bow here to pick up. The long bow, which for the longest time I used to think that this was the best bow. I don't know why, I was an idiot. I actually used this for quite a while on my first playthrough. And this is this thing is good, but it's not actually that good. There's the fuck! I keep getting chunks. That's nice, but large shards is where it's at. Probably we're gonna need to do some blight town farming if push comes to shove, because here we have the longbow and feather arrows. So we officially have a new type of arrow. Thing with this is. Large bow, projectile weapon for experienced hunters. The thing with the longbow is that it does what it says on the box. It is a long boy, which means that all of the arrows shot by it get increased range. The disadvantage with the longbow is that, as you can see, the drawing of it is way, way slower. And it's unfortunate that there are no good enemies for me to demonstrate this on. But but we'll get around to it. And really, you know, you have to decide whether the increased range is worth the slowness. For most people, no. Oh, fuck. Go ahead and crotch stab this Black Knight a couple of times. Oh shit. Am I gonna get crotch stabbed by him? Possible. Possible, possible. Let's not take any risks here. I just want the the shield. The grass crest. Fuck. Should have just picked it up and ran. Keep dying here. It's not good. I haven't died like at all for the first. Well, there's only been one episode. But <laughs> oh shit! I didn't rest. Uh, well, at least this is a good place for a demonstration. Um, we might as well use what we're given. Seventy damage. It also gets more damage apparently. Does it? Well, I mean, it's a difficult comparison because I've already upgraded this thing. That's 74. God, it's like playing my Dark Demon Souls playthrough. Always just one or two points of damage away from killing in one hit. 83. Don't even think about healing. But the feather arrows, the deal with the feather arrows is that you get increased range. You see... You see how it goes? Uh, like, even if I shoot it up there, it still flies straight. Whereas if I shot a uh, standard arrow there, it already begins to drop a little bit. That's the deal with the feather arrow. So, now that the demonstration is over, let's try and get back to where I ended up getting killed. Not my proudest moment. The question is, should I even use the Grass Crest Shield? Because... People kind of always shit on it because it's really powerful. I feel like I should use one of these like bitch-ass parrying shields for this build. That would be the most fitting. Okay, that's step one. Hey, yeah, it's 420 souls. Cool. That's the weed number. You know. You know how it is. Oh, this boy is getting ignored. Let's just head back to the bonfire. Uh, should I use a homeward? Yeah, why not? We are lazy today, so homeward bone that shit up. Okay. Obviously, well, I can get one level. 
I was gonna say, obviously, there's no way I can get a level, but I can. Let's put it. 14 is the magic number here, apparently. Let's also go and talk to Onion Bro. Just quickly. I mean, you don't need to talk to him at this part of the questline to advance it, but still. Cool. Onion Bro, check. Uh, we'll see how far we get with any of these quest lines. We'll see, we'll see. Really, the question is... I'm not gonna have time for the... The what you call it. The gargoyles, for sure. I'm not gonna have time, but... I might still have time for Lotrek and all the other bits and pieces here. There's quite a few bits and pieces. We're gonna have a ranged battle with this guy? I think we are. Oh. See, I can dodge. You can't. You're an idiot. Honestly, this is way, way more convenient. There's no way for him to buff his little hollows. And that's gonna make the corridor way, way easier. And that's putting it lightly. That'll make this guy easier. But not difficult either. It's an unbuffable enemy. Because he's just too far. I thought there was one hiding behind the door there. But I think I got that confused. Can I just... Hell yeah, I can. Okay, they are, they are a little bit... It's like... They're fast zombies, you know. And this is... This weapon is meant for slow zombies. What's his name in The Walking Dead? The guy played by Norman Reedus. Daryl. He's the one that uses a bow, right? Yeah. I've seen like three episodes of that show, so I've no idea what's going on with The Walking Dead. Only that it's shitty now, apparently. Or everybody thinks it's shitty now. By the way, did I even mention it that today's Halloween? I don't think I did. Happy Halloween, by the way. It's not really a thing here. They're trying to make it a thing here. Like, more and more decorations and everything keeps popping up every year, which is fun because, you know, it warms my six years living in America part of my heart. So, we got like, one of the stores had like pumpkin colored burger buns. So we made burgers today, and we got some candy and all that, so... Try to celebrate, but it's not like you don't have kids running door to door here in costumes. It's just not a thing. We have our own Halloween uh, in February, which I think corresponds to Mardi Gras. Uh, like it's the equivalent. That's when kids go around dressing up. Actually, there's no reason why we couldn't do this. What the fuck? I am getting invaded sometimes, which means I'm online. Shit. Because first time around, there's no... Wait, wait, hold on a second. I genuinely don't know. Is there a fog gate here the first time around? Because if there is, because I'm like 90% sure I'm not online, but that bonfire went out. It could be that I'm stoned today and all the bong smoke keeps pulling there. But I don't know, man. Maybe I am. Okay. Gargoyles, shout out to the Duke's archives in the background. Okay, Solaire. Listen to me. Listen, you take care of melee. I'll handle the ranged bit. I'll provide support to you. If there's ever time to use feather arrows. Listen, we're a good team. Told you. We're the ultimate team. I didn't cut his tail off. Solaire, get in there.
No, don't use your... Jesus, you're not getting the tactic, are you, man? Have you ever played WoW? Jesus, that's a lot of damage. I'm running support. We made quite a team there. GG, Solaire, thanks. We'll hit you up later. Easy. It's a perfect team. Perfect team composition. It's just how it is. Listen, being an archer is all about running support. Which I think I've accomplished there. And thinking back, I'm pretty sure I was being an idiot and there is a fog gate there by default. So, yeah, we would be seeing uh, messages. Like, there's no way I'm getting invaded, but the game is so dead that no messages are showing up. Because that's the last thing that dies in any Souls game, the messages. Because people just keep leaving them, even after. Like, all other aspects of the online system has died. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I think this makes for a very, like... Nice and productive episode, to say the least. I didn't expect to get to the first bell, but we did, and I'm happy about that. So there is no Peretz interlude in this one, but I still gotta say thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode of the Ultimate Hunter's Guide, make sure to give the video a like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications as always, and I will catch all of you next time. Peace out and goodbye.